Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I am Pete. This is the Ever Canadian, and this is my review of the handy dandy Evercade EXP. Yes, finally, I've got my review ready to go. This beautiful Capcom um, display sand that I picked up from Etsy. Um, yeah, Jelly Belly Creations, I believe. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, I picked this up. I was, the, I think, the last one to get it. But this is the review, yes, and it's taken me a long while to get here, actually. Close to two months. Um, I got this system towards the third week of December, mid mid December, third week of December, 2022. And as always, when I do a review, which aren't very often on the channel, I want to spend an excessive amount of time with the system so I can give you my, my unbiased opinions. I'm not one of those dudes who, or YouTubers who wants to do a review video after playing it for a day or 10 hours or half a week or something like that. No, I want to spend a significant amount of time with it so I can give you my, my full opinions on it. So first of all, what do I think of this system? I think it's a very, very good upgrade to the original Evercade handheld console. A big upgrade. And um, there's a lot of things I like, and there's a few things that annoys me about this system, and we'll get into that. But first of all, we're going to take a look at the hardware itself, right? So it size-wise, it's pretty much the same size as um, the old original one. It feels heavier, I can tell you that right now. When I did my unboxing, I talked a lot about that, how it um, feels a little bit heavier in your hands and stuff like that. And it just keeps turning off like that. I think it's because I've got the setting too low to, to dim the screen. But anyway, so, I mean, it has the cartridge slots, backwards compatibility. This is the back of the system, it has intake here, it has just a cosmetic grill right here, uh, intake and outtake valves. Um, you know, it's got little two little pads there and what they're supposed to do probably with something i don't know screws i guess under that uh then there's the tate button right here um you know standard thing usb-c which is big volume rockers and uh, a light indicator light uh to let you know so this is the system i've got the c64 and been playing that and enjoying it quite a bit so on the front of it you've got a new d-pad a, sh a more shallower d-pad um but you know this is the new d-pad face buttons here this is all white EXP logo here, you got your Tate buttons over here specific to Tate mode, and you got your start and select. And up here you got the redesigned trigger systems. So it's funny, they have a different kind of input click there, but it doesn't bot really bother me. You don't really use these buttons very often. You got uh, HDMI, mini HDMI out up here, all the standard stuff, power button, the whole work. So let's get into the important stuff. Feel. It feels fantastic in your hands. It is the perfect weight when you're holding it this way. I can't tell you enough how comfortable it is here. So I think they've got the ergonomics of the design great. Everything seems to fit nice in your hands. And you really, I've played this and run the battery down um, after four hours and had no problem comfort wise playing the game like this. Ah, D pad. Let's talk about this D pad. D pad's good. Um, I'm not 100% sure I find it better than what's on the VS or the original one, but I am getting used to it. Just the shallow and smoothness of it. There's not a lot, there's no no real texture there, but I, I really like it. It uh, feels like it has nice rolling action, which is really cool. It feels natural in your hands. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's solid, very good. Like no complaints at all. Buttons, I mean, they're, they're the smaller size buttons. Um, again, they're all white. Kind of wish they were colored, just, just that's a cosmetic thing, and I'll get to that. Uh, then you've got the, you know, your main uh, home button right here. And this is where we run into some problems with me on the button placement. Not these over here. I don't want to talk about those because those are for Tate mode. But I really don't like having start, select, and home all close together and stacked right here. I would have much rather have, you know, start, select here or closer together or somewhere not stacked so close together. It just feels... Even right up here would have been better because you very seldom have your fingers going up there. Uh, but anyway, I just feel like I don't really like those placements of these buttons here. They could have been here. They could have been up here. I don't know. I just feel like they're in an awkward position for me button-wise. But they all work. They all click. They all do their thing. Now, audio-wise, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that. Because many of you know on the channel, I'm le almost legally deaf. Um, so I do uh, wear hearing aids and stuff like that. So volume is pretty important to me, but I don't kind of judge the quality of it that well. I'm not really equipped to do that. Um, so I do rely on speaker audio. 
uh, for me. That's a big thing. And the two speaker audios are right here. I don't really use a headset because I'm comfortable with my hearing aids. Um, so I don't really wear that. So the speaker audio for me is super important. And I got to be honest with you, they're pretty crappy. They're really tinny. Um, and, you know, we'll get into get into a game here. Go into a Capcom game. And it's just that it's not a good experience for me. It's 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 passable. But that's about it. Um, it's just, but the headset, again, not a good judge, is better with you got a headset on. It sounds better. So let's talk about audio. I'm going to turn up the volume. So this is the audio, the audio uh, indicators right here. And um, this is what I've also got a problem with in the game. Oh, like, so let's go there. So we'll get into it. I'll just do it. So... I'll let it listen for a sec. That's his max volume. Right there. Which, you know, it's not the loudest, but it's got a little bit of, you know, it's, it's passable. I'll put it that way. And that's about it. But another problem I got with the volume is you can't hold, let me just get, you can't, hold this down and it'll go all the way down see you have to click it down which hey i know that's might be a deal breaker for some but like if i want to turn the volume up i just want to hold the button it only goes up one level so that for me is a bit of an issue and the fact that the volume's down here i mean it's again not the greatest placement for it but you know that's just me right so that's where the audio is. I think the audio, if they ever did a new improvement of it, I would fix this so that you can hold it and just go down instead of having to click it down. And um, the volume, the speaker quality, I would probably look at improving if they do a revision of the system. So that is basically what I wanted to talk about in the audio uh, area of the system. All right, now let's talk about Tatemo because we're still talking about hardware, right? And, you know, it's important to discuss, oh, that's wrong one. Let's go in night U43, Tate mode. So the fact that it's on a button is amazing. You just, no software, you just click it and it works, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's get into Tate mode. It works brilliantly. There's no doubt about it, but there's the first problem I got with it. I gotta go up here <laughs> to go to select buttons. So that kind of feels like it's a little disjoint. I find the buttons a little close together. I, I have to admit, like they are a little close together for me. Not a deal breaker though, not a deal breaker at all. Um, and I find holding it is okay, comfortable wise for about 20 minutes. And and then I find that, you know what, it kind of gets a little crampy and stuff. And it's just me just getting used to it. Uh, but I found 20 minutes to be the, the sweet spot for it. And, um, and you know, the fact that it just works out of the box, there's no software required, it flips and works brilliantly all the time is amazing. But like, if I wanna turn up the volume, you know, at your own risk, cause you gotta keep clicking it. So it's just button placements. I don't know how they could solve that in the in the product, to be honest with you, because they're do this product's doing so many different things. But this Tate mode for me is the game changer for it because you know what? It works brilliantly, it's innovative, it is so much fun to be able to do this with a button click. And sure, the comfort factor is a little bit challenging, you know, 20 minutes is good, but after playing a shooter, shoot em up or a shooter for 20 minutes, that's pretty much my fill at any game session. And I wanna switch to something else. But otherwise, ergonomically, my biggest fear before the system came out was how I was gonna hold it. I found no problem. Funny thing is, I find myself resting See, I gotta keep doing that. I find myself resting it a lot on a table or something like that. So that's, I, you know, I don't really play it li like dangling like that. So, you know, that for me was um, my preferred way to play it. And Tate mode just works like great. Like if you get tired and you wanna play, I don't know why you'd wanna play that when you, this way when you have Tate mode available, but you know, hey, it is, uh, it is there. So yeah, hardware wise, it is, you know, it does a lot more right than it does wrong. I can tell you that right now. So um, for me, that's a, that's a big win. And I'll just get out. All right, now let's talk about screen. 
Screen's brilliant. I can't tell you how much the screen's awesome. It's got amazing viewing angles. It's crisp, it's clear, it's got everything you'd want in a, in a modern handheld screen-wise. Is it OLED? No, of course not, but you don't need OLED, right? Everything, most of the games here are in 720p anyway, so, or 480p, right? So it's, it's perfect, it works brilliantly. Um, so the screen is amazing. Let's talk about battery life, because we're talking about screen. Battery life, a um, little disappointing at around four hours. That's what I'm finding average with, I'm getting with it, but I'm not really doing any exact calculations on that. But it is a little disappointing in a modern console. I would have liked to see more to six to seven hours, but hey, it is what it is. And um, you know what? Uh, for most part, I've taken it traveling with me a few times now. I've taken it on local ferries, a two-hour ferry ride. I've played the crap out of it. It's lasted perfectly. And to charge it's pretty quick. The recharge on it takes, uh, you know, maybe an hour to charge it fully. Uh, I've not really timed it, but it's USB-C, so that's pretty cool. Uh, kind of... <laughs> The, the flip side of this, it's, or the bad side of this, is I don't have very many USB-C cables, so I guess I'll be starting to collect more of them as we go. Um, but overall, screen size is great. Now, let's talk about software. So when you get into this, it's got basically a lot of the same software you're used to seeing on the VS and the original handheld. But if you're new to this, I'll just go quick through it. It's got tons of uh, aspect ratios to play with. you got original uh, pixel perfect, you got some shader stuff, subtle scan lines, strong scan lines, you got bezels, you got, you know, quite a few, you got the Evercade EXP, but you can go to the origin, uh, origin one, wireframe, you know, so box art one's always cool, I like that one, um, you got tete, be uh, tate bezels, so you can do that too, which is really good, and you got dynamic rate, I've got that disabled, brightness, so you can, you can save some battery life on brightness if you want to turn it up and down, it's, you know, I keep it on max brightness. I got to hold eyes. Screen dimming. Um, I'm going to put that to 30 seconds. Um, but you can select that off. So that actually, I don't know if we have to worry about burning on this. And you got menu scan line. So that's on that. You can get some themes. This is where I think they need to expand. They got four gigs of memory in this system. So they could add some stuff on there. And, uh, you know, you can put whatever theme you want on there. Blue and gold, because that's Capcom, right? But you can go like that and change your, your theme, right, if you want. And uh, yeah, so there's tons of stuff, accessibility system, credits, all works. Uh, secrets, that's where you can put some secret codes in, tons of those up, check out my channel. And then you get the EXP menu, and so this is a big, uh, big part of why a lot of people probably are picking this up and noticed it. It's got the Capcom collection. You just saw me playing. This is built into every EXP. 18 of these games are in here. You've got... Um, you know, a varied selection. Check out my channel. I'm doing a video of run through of each one of these games, but you've got a smattering of both Tate games, uh, arcade classics, and uh, some NES Mega Man games on there too, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, that was a big thing, right? 18 Capcom games built into the system. It's pretty fantastic. They have also do the hidden games. Uh, there's like secrets and hidden games. And now as you find them, they can unlock and stay on your Evercade uh, EXP, so you can play them at a glance. So if you want to get into your Kubo 1 and 2, you can easily do that once you've unlocked them. Again, tons of resources on the, on the web, how to unlock them. Plus, I have a, a video series on all the unlockable games, So, which I thought was, uh, which is really cool. And another thing you're not seeing here, but you're going to see coming soon, that's going to be the, uh, I'm pretty sure, the Evercade Game of the Month, the Hindi Euro stuff. So um, that's where every month for eight months, you're going to get a, a taste of a Indie Heroes 3 collection game that's coming out. They did that in 2022 on the VS, and it's going to come to the XP because they want to have uh, feature parity across the VS and the Evercade XP. So yeah, there's there's a lot to love in this. Your full backwards compatibility to over 30 collections that are available through arcade, microcomputer, and home console. So there's tons and tons of things available. So, you know, at the end of the day, my review is very positive on this system. Um, there's some things they could probably, you know, revise if they ever revise this, oh, but it's totally up to you. But there's nothing in the negatives that would uh, make this a deal breaker for myself. Um, if I had to rate this console out of, you know, if I had to rate this console out of 10, it's a solid eight and a half for me. 
that's where I would give it right now. And that's over, that's after over a hundred hours playing this, taking it with me, traveling with it, doing as much as I can with it. It is the only way I really play most of my Evercade games right now. So um, I'm just having a blast uh, getting, uh, having fun with this and, you know, taking, if I, want, I got a hankering for C64 when I go traveling, why not, right? And uh, I'll just boot it up and play some uh, Gateway to Apshai. And uh, triggers to go. Yeah, I got to figure out how to start that again, this game. But anyway, so that's my review. Once again, I am Pete. Thank you so much for watching. And you have an awesome day. Bye, everyone.